Anchored in charming Dana Point Harbor, the Brig Pilgrim is one of Southern California's most beloved tall ships. Built in 1945 to replicate the original circa 1825 ship, this three-masted schooner is now home to an award-winning living history program, and it's open to the public most Sundays. To learn more, I met with Ocean Institute's Maritime Coordinator, George Mack, for a quick tour and history lesson. So what can you tell me about this magnificent ship? <laughs> well, this, and, and it certainly is, uh, this is a copy of the ship that Richard Henry Dana would have sailed on during his time as a sailor from about 1834 to 1836, going from the east coast of the United States, Boston, to the west coast of the United States, which this area here would have been known as San Juan Bay to him. Okay. And uh, now, of course, it's, it's named after him, so it's called Dana Point. Uh, but this would be, this, this area here and these cliff faces that are still here behind us, uh, are, he, I think he would definitely know them even to this day. Uh, the, the vessel actually was built in 1945 at the end of the Second World War and it actually was a real working ship on the North Sea. It was built in Denmark and from there uh, sometime around 30 some years ago uh, there were folks that were interested in doing historical programming in, in, in this area about the, uh, the book that, that Dana wrote, which was two years before the mass. And from there, they had embarked on sort of this long journey to be able to bring this ship here and modify it just a bit so it was about as exact to Dana's original vessel as possible. Now here, I'll, I'll show you what to do. This is okay. probably the safest way to do it, <laughs> is you want to face this way and go, and go down, because it seems awkward, but it's actually safer. Okay. <laughs> and just watch your head. Watch your head. So what people would do is, they would say, hey, you're going to California from Boston here. I need to go. If you want to, okay. But, you know, you're going you're gonna to pay for a, a kind of a, an econo-class ticket. And so this hole, if you can imagine, this whole hole would be pretty much to the rafters with cargo. So if you had a, a spot, a ticket on here, you'd have to kind of climb over all the cargo to get back into your bunk. Now, if you were somebody of means, if you had money, then this was for you. From here on out, if you'll notice in Dana's book, the title of it is Two Years Before the Mass. Okay. That was kind of a, a jargon or a slang term that sailors would use. Kind of in the same way that like today we, we call a job blue collar or white collar. Okay, if you were, this being the mast, if you were before the mast, in front of it, you were a worker. You were somebody that was definitely in a very harsh situation. If you were after the mast, then you had a much nicer life. Now, if you had money, what you would do is, of course, this would be your hatch. You would come down here, these would be staterooms. There's really nothing much to them. It's the same thing as this. It's just that all the cargo would stop here. So you had room to come down here, go into one of these staterooms, and enjoy the journey there. But in real life, yeah, this would have been it. So the upper class passenger would definitely have had... And as I said, you know, there's, there's really nothing more to it. I mean, you've got a couple more bunks, but that's it. There's nothing lavish about it. Uh, it was still, but, but the fact that you had privacy, you had space, um, that was what people would pay for. Um, in here is what's called the forecastle, And this is the very bow of the ship. You can see the... the, the point of the ship kind of converges right there. Now, in this area here, even though you'd have four bunks, you'd probably have a hammock here and a hammock here. So that means you would be able to sleep six people. But you have to remember, on a vessel like this, you've got a crew of anywhere from 30 to 40 people. This was the entire crew's quarters. Now, you'd probably say to yourself, well, how can you have 30 to 40 people in here? How they did it was this. It was something that they still do even today on modern submarines, it's called hot bunking, where basically you only have 
the amount of sleeping quarters for the amount of staff that would be sleeping. So in, on vessels like this, they did four-hour watches, four-hour shifts. Well, there were six four-hour periods in the 24-hour period. So if six people are down here for four hours, six times six, 36. You could have up to 36 people. Every four hours, when that bell rings, everybody gets out, goes up on their job, the next crew of guys come down, and if it's their turn to go to sleep, they the next six come in here and go to sleep. And so uh, you're climbing into somebody's bunk that's still hot. That's why they call it hot bunking. And uh, you know when you think about it, that's pretty disgusting. This, whenever you look at movies, you see the bow of a ship going, kush, 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 you know, as it's crashing through the waves. You're getting thrown up into these rafters. So a lot of sailors, that's why you always see them with like a big duffel bag, not a suitcase or anything. What they would normally do is take all of their soft items, their clothing and stuff, and put them in those soft bags and tie them up in here. So if they got thrown up into the rafters, it wouldn't hurt so bad. Okay. And uh, so you can see, I mean, if you're at the very bow of this ship, and the captain and his chosen officers are all the way at the stern, which has actually the smoothest ride, you can be in really bad seas and be in the stern and still not feel a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, the ship takes up an awful lot of that, sort of that shock absorption in there. And uh, so... Here it's it's not fun. It's it's not fun, <laughs> especially sound like it. <laughs> especially with some serious weather. It's it's uh, definitely make sure on your paycheck. Yeah. Next time you're in Orange County, check out this sturdy and entertaining tall ship. It's sure to be a fun and educational family experience. For more California travel videos, tips, and advice, log on to CaliforniaTravelExpert.com.